dear friends this word consciousness and conscience uh, both are somehow linked together uh, the conscience is uh, uh, an essence of us as human beings uh, it has been uh, defined in a somewhat funny way but uh, it brings it to truth that it is that which uh, makes us behave when nobody is watching it is uh, of course when somebody is watching then we are mindful of our behavior but then when nobody is watching still uh, we tend to behave at least at times and in some respects so uh, what is it that makes us behave even though uh, nobody is watching so that is conscience uh, it's a good idea good way of putting it and it has been stressed especially in all uh, moral and religious uh, disciplines that uh, uh, conscience is uh, to be strengthened to be made robust uh, and it is shown also as the sign uh, of our uh, uh, how uh, our religious life can progress to its uh, ultimate goal of perfection it is all based on how uh, uh, we are conscientious in our uh, behavior in our understanding as well as in our behavior uh, both there should be this correspondence uh, what we understand or what we become conscious of and then uh, what we feel uh, what we should be doing and actually do it uh, that is the conscience part of it acting as per conscience uh, in fact uh, the presence of uh, something that determines uh, what is true and what is not true Uh, is the basis with which we make all judgments uh, something is true or not true and that is not which is implanted in us that is intrinsic uh, it is with us it gets modified and changed uh, due to various social situations and gets impacted to some extent but uh, that intrinsic presence of that which uh, always determines something is true and something is not true and on the basis of that the next step comes something is right and something is not right the sense of uh, tr- truth is uh, not implanted in us it is not put uh, afterwards it is intrinsic and because of which we get the sense of you know what is just uh, what is uh, the right and what is not right uh, and wherever we see that i have acted according to my perception of truth then we feel yes uh, i acted right so this sense of right and wrong is a special feature of human life uh, what i mean by human life here is uh, we are in many many respects just like any other animal uh, our uh, uh, many uh, things that we do are just like other animal uh, does uh, in fact that beautiful sanskrit verse uh, that says that uh, in these respects like eating uh, sleeping uh, procreating uh, human beings and other animals they are indistinguishable human beings eat other every animal eats 
uh, right from the uh, smallest uh, uh, monomolecular thing up to a very gigantic uh, species like a big whale. Uh, everybody eats. Uh, everybody uh, has their pattern of rest, sleeping, and everybody uh, has uh, uh, the tendency to procreate. So all this is common with everybody. What is special feature of human beings that uh, it says that religion is the special feature of human beings? Uh, that is what distinguishes human beings from other animals. And they, again, uh, in another similar text, this idea of what is religion is elaborated in the context of this very uh, particular verse. And that is uh, that in human beings we see that uh, tendency to act according to what is right and what is wrong. The right action and wrong action, uh, not just the action that is liked and not liked. Uh, that is common with all other animals. Liked means pleasant and not pleasant. Pleasant actions and uh, unpleasant actions. Uh, that distinction all animals feel. But even though something may be pleasant, I see that it is not right and then I tend not to do it. Uh, and some actions, certain things may be unpleasant, but I see that it is right. It must be done like this. It may cause pain, but it has to be done. Uh, it is right. For example, uh, if uh, my very near and dear say, my son has uh, committed a crime. Now I don't, uh, I love my son. I don't want him to be punished by law. But then my sense of justice steps in. That yes, he is my son. I love him, no doubt. But yet, is it right? to shield him uh, from the law? Had he been somebody else, would I be doing the same thing? No, I wouldn't be. And so a person uh, with that conscience uh, predominantly present uh, overcomes the tendency of what is pleasant and does what is right. So uh, this is the sense of right and uh, that really is our conscience, what is right, what is not right. I uh, feel, uh, you know, many times I remember that one gentleman uh, whom I told, well, you, you go and cut the fruits for the worship. But remember, I see you have a tendency that while cutting the fruit, you put a few pieces in the mouth. Uh, while you are doing it for the worship, that is strictly disallowed. And then he started doing it and told me, well, Swami, it's a, cutting fruit is fine, but it is very difficult to check myself that, uh, well, uh, I feel very strong sensation that I should put things in mouth. And many times I think, well, there is nobody watching me. There is nobody else around. And so even if I put a piece in mouth, who is going to see and scold me for that? Nobody is there to uh, chastise me uh, in that matter because nobody sees it. But even if nobody has seen, he said, well, uh, I tell myself, I myself am seeing it. So I am seeing it. I am there to see it. And so that is going to... to uh, chastise me, that is going to scold me, that is going to torment me, that is conscience. That uh, it creates <coughs> in human beings, it creates a sense of guilt. Uh, that uh, if you go by conscience, if your actions match what your conscience is telling, then you feel good. Yes, I did what I should have done. 
and if you see that uh, you have not done what you should have done then you get a, a prick of conscience which uh, uh, could uh, then degenerate into a, a very stubborn feeling of guilt and many suffer uh, from this feeling of guilt for a long time it is uh, difficult to get rid of if it is stuck too deep uh, and that is why there is so much of debate about conscience uh, had there been no conscience at all then there would be no guilt mm, it is and so there will be no the psychological problems arising uh, from this guilt but then there will be hordes of other problems that will be stepping in if uh, no conscience at all Mm, then people will be behaving uh, with all s uh, selfishness, uh, trying to, uh, you say, kill others, uh, torture others, uh, and grab the things that they want without paying any attention to law, because uh, that is all that you have. It will be the law can be then enforced only. Uh, it has to be enforced by a big police force. Again, who is going to check those police force if they don't have conscience? And so, uh, it becomes a very difficult situation if the conscience uh, is removed. And if the conscience is there, we have to say uh, that how uh, it works positively. The uh, treatment of conscience therefore becomes very important that how one uh, makes it as a tool, may converts it into a tool of improving behavior, making our life happy by conforming it to conscience, teaching us at every step. Uh, it is like this, that if somebody, a little child while walking falls, and then that sends a signal, uh, the, you, I have not seen any little child uh, while trying to walk at falls and then uh, keeps on crying for hours and uh, no, no, now I won't walk at all because I fell down. No, the child gets the signal. Hey, uh, I should put my foot a little differently so that I will not fall. So that is how the conscience uh, should work that yes, uh, this is uh, something uh, I did wrong but that should prompt me to do things in the right manner. Not, uh, it should not convert into uh, a brooding uh, thing, uh, which is a big mental disorder that creates a big block in a person's uh, whole life. And uh, therefore, when we look at the conscience, we should see that it has to be uh, handled properly. When handled properly, it becomes a great tool, uh, not only on the plane of social morality, but also uh, it brings in uh, the spiritual force uh, that takes us forward uh, to the ultimate goal of seeing the same one self pervading everything. Uh, our immortal, uh, ever unchanging reality can be perceived then uh, if we have uh, this uh, uh, strong conscience uh, where we see what is right and then act according to that which is right. In fact, in Kathopanishad, that has been uh, singled out by the great teacher uh, the teacher is portrayed there as the death uh, and the god of death is teaching a very young student and he tested uh, the student before giving him the knowledge of the immortality. It's a big story, I am not going to go into the details, but uh, he tempted the student that uh, if you give up this idea, I will give you many other nice, nice, nice things. 
uh, if you give up this idea of realizing this ultimate truth and all that which is very difficult uh, almost impossible many people have tried and they have not succeeded why don't you settle for something more pleasant i will give you the kingdom of this whole earth i will give you a long long life uh, and i will fill your life with all enjoyments Uh, that you can just ask and there it is given i have the cap- capacity to give all that uh, it will be a life free from any need it will be just uh, whatever you seek and it will be there with you all that i will give you now this young boy rejects all these things says no no these are all after all temporary things howsoever long life it could be uh, but it is after all uh, temporary it comes and goes i am not interested in any of those things howsoever wealth uh, you may give uh, it again is not conducive always to happiness uh, and therefore uh, i want that which i have asked for uh, the secret of life and death and the nature of reality and then the god of death heaps lot of praise uh, on this young boy this young student <laughs> nachiketa his name uh, so he tells that look uh, this is the key uh, the uh, understanding what is right and Uh, what is pleasant the difference between understanding that uh, the, something is right and something is pleasant uh, this difference many do not understand uh, what is pleasant is automatically taken as right and you have clearly understood the difference between them to such an extent that uh, all the pleasantries could not uh, unsettle you you stuck to that which is right and therefore you are worthy uh, a worthy disciple whom this truth can be given and then it goes how he imparts this knowledge to this young man uh, this idea of uh, conscience therefore is a great tool but we have to learn to understand it and first thing in learning it is to see these two different levels of conscience or two different ideas of conscience the conscience uh, that is uh, uh, rooted in our changing personality and the conscience that is rooted in our intrinsic sense of right and wrong uh, uh in i quote from uh, a paragraph uh, a print out given to me by uh, raymond sitting there uh, it is from psychological commentaries on teachings of gurdjieff and auspensky by morris nicol uh, he had earlier also given me a book on uh, by morris nicol Uh, and uh, it, this is a short quote that i am giving as you know the experiment of religion as a means of conveying teachings from uh, conscious to sleeping humanity one of the sources of failure is that each person sets up his own dogma as absolute truth and so people persecute despise and kill each other in the name of god they may do so very earnestly and say they act from conscience but this is false or mechanical conscience and is formed in personality this false or acquired conscience is not based on our inner understanding it is related to false personality and so to feeling merit and therefore feeling that one is right and better than others 
and that others who have different religious beliefs are inferior or wicked and contemptible and worthy to be killed. It goes to that extent uh, that they can be killed because once you decide that uh, th their religion, their behavior is bad and then if that person is bad, uh, if you want to make the world good, uh, it is justified that all that is bad that should be eliminated and so this uh, bad people can be removed. It is, it is not only in the field of religion, uh, even in politics, you see this, that, uh, well, uh, they, uh, our own example, uh, Republicans and Democrats, I know people uh, who uh, say they belong to one party and therefore uh, just uh, by definition anything done by a person from other party has to be bad. Not only that, that person uh, be, has to be bad. Uh, if I was telling, uh, just uh, uh, casually, there was nothing that uh, uh, the, about some, he is a very good man. But then uh, the person that I was telling to uh, knew that that person belongs to some other political party. And so immediately uh, she uh, exclaimed, no, uh, he cannot be good. Uh, because he is, mm, so uh, it is, uh, how can it be possible? So it is, uh, uh, that is how that conscience and that person feels that it is my duty uh, to see that my particular party, which is good uh, and therefore contains only all good people and therefore they have to be brought to the forefront and the others, uh, that party is wrong and therefore contains all wrong people and so has to be eliminated completely. So uh, that is how they, uh, this uh, false conscience uh, that is, uh, sometimes it gets trained by the social circumstances around us. Uh, sometimes some of our ex experiences uh, contribute to that. And we get all these set ideas that this is good, this is not good. Uh, if you read uh, some, say, a book on proper diet, and now those things keep on changing. What was considered good diet 20 years ago, uh, now uh, that diet is considered bad. Uh, that is the, the, um, how this science works. So, uh, but when you reread it 20 years back, you made a determination that this is good to eat. And so, uh, th that sticks with you and so, uh, they, those who eat that, they eat something good. So, uh, they must be good people. Automatically you make friends with them. Uh, now they may be otherwise thieves, uh, robbers, whatever you may say, you know, murderers, cheats. Uh, but yet, just because that person eats this, uh, nice thing, good thing, good diet and therefore must be good uh, and thus my opinions get shaped like that. P.G. Woodhouse, a great uh, humor humorist, uh, he has portrayed some such nice characters uh, in his stories. Uh, one uh, British lord, uh, the lordship was gone but uh, they, still he had the uh, that uh, pride about it. And he uh, was very much interested in raising pigs. So uh, for him, any person uh, who doesn't like pigs is automatically a bad person. 
and so the story says nicely that his daughter uh, liked a man and so was uh, has started meeting him and then so was bringing that man to see uh, her dad and the dad just was at that time uh, was tending his pigs so uh, and uh, he asked a few questions about pigs to that man and the man said well i am not much interested in i am not in pigs automatically ah uh, he told the daughter hey that man, man is not suitable for you he has young looks but you girls go by looks see he is deficient in these most important fundamental things about life he has no interest in pigs so <laughs> it is so it is like that the conscience gets shaped like this this humor may be a little bit uh, exaggeration but yes uh, uh, people say that uh, in that manner that somebody uh, one lady uh, i know uh, likes chocolates a lot and so anybody who doesn't uh, have enough admiration for chocolates is not kind of human being you know it is it is not to be classified amongst human beings um, because uh, doesn't like chocolates that is the meaning of being human to like chocolates and to like ice creams uh, if that person doesn't do like that then naturally uh, uh, is out of the pale of human beings so uh, that is how Uh, the conscience many times this this type of uh, conscience uh, that is based on the changing circumstances uh, something that is fed to you uh, from childhood uh, a society that you live in uh, that shapes it it is uh, like i came from india and then when i uh, see here uh that uh, i grew up with the idea that it is bad it has been told right from my school days early school days uh that uh, if uh, you uh, drink something while sitting in your classroom uh if you have a cup of tea coffee or uh, some snack and you eat uh, uh, while the class is going on that is bad that is completely wrong to do it and uh, now uh, this is uh, when i came here and i was to give a talk in some class and i saw almost all students there uh, had a cup of coffee sitting there by their side and then uh, uh, and many times they were eating also and so i thought oh these are all mannerless bad students <laughs> then i thought to myself later that it, that was the first reaction that uh, what is bad about it actually uh, it is uh, it was uh, in your society you were trained like that that this is uh, right and this is not right uh but if you don't uh, uh, is there any uh, basis for it other than the social custom and tradition uh what is wrong with these people they are learning nicely uh, they are asking good interesting questions uh, they are absorbing things so should i judge them as bad students just because they have a cup of coffee in their hands not a right idea so uh one has to see uh, the conscience or the way to judge things just based on uh, the social circumstances uh and uh, learning to go beyond i remember in uh, we were going in uh, on a street in france in paris uh myself and i uh, didn't uh, don't understand french and therefore one uh, gentleman who had working knowledge although he was not french he had uh, a good knowledge of french language so he was accompanying me so uh, but he wanted to make sure uh, if whether this road is proper or not how we should be going so he entered a shop and then uh, asked something to the person there 
and then immediately came out and told me no no let us get out he is not ready to talk to us and what happened look uh, nice man why did he no no uh, he greeted me he said bonjour and i did not return the greeting and so uh, he decided that we are not people worthy of speaking and so uh, therefore let us go to and ask somebody else so that is how we the judgment gets formed that they says uh, oh, these are only people who uh, return my greetings in the same way uh, they can be d- done business with not others so uh, this this was an exception i don't say that this is the rule there in france but uh, yes some people could be like that it is uh, uh where i grew up it is strange to say thanks you know for every little thing and not a custom and so when i see, see here uh, every time uh, uh, some little this thing is favor is done you have to say thanks even if no favor is done you have to say thanks <laughs> uh, so it is it is all the time you know it is uh, so uh this is an extra word that has to be added otherwise uh, you are not following the proper etiquettes and manners it is wrong so it becomes part of this conscience acquired conscience we make a big baggage of this and therefore uh, those who do not exactly follow that uh is uh, consider we consider them first uh, reaction is strange they are strange people then that strange gets unconsciously translated into bad people because they are not like us and we are good that is always the case you know we are always good and nobody is i is bad i am always good the other is bad so uh, we say that that is not right and consider them to be uh, you know uh, bad people and then the natural that bad has to be eliminated so uh, it is to be if we kill them nothing wrong in that so even if we don't go to kill them because uh, it is again against our conscience we are very conscientious people so uh, okay they are strange they are bad i won't go to kill them but i pray uh, may those people be eliminated if somebody uh, somehow they got killed good god eliminated them so that i feel good that they are gone and yet i did not do that therefore i do not feel that prick of conscience so uh, this is uh, something that is based on our continuously changing personality so here now let us analyze the different layers of our personality in vedanta uh, especially in the 15 chapter of bhagavad gita Uh, you see uh, three beings are told that shara uh, purush means the continuously changing person akshara purush means the relatively unchanging person and the third is called uttama purush that uttama means the supreme being Uh, which is uh, not caught in any relatives uh, not it it is absolute being now naturally for the absolute there is no other and so therefore no conscience also but these two uh, the changing and relatively unchanging what is relatively unchanging see uh, in each of us we feel that there is uh, something that does not change uh, on the basis of that uh, we uh, have our regular behavior it will not be possible if we consider if we just look at our body our thoughts uh, our mind we will see that it is a continuously changing thing and therefore just on the basis of that you cannot make any commitment you cannot take any decision 
uh, if you tell somebody that okay tomorrow we will meet here and if you are looking at yourself only as body the body has changed body changes uh, every moment uh, they time means change in body body keeps on changing mind keeps on changing all the time uh, and yet then who f- has to follow that commitment there is something that we see as unchanging uh, when you go to meet that person as per you decided that yes we will meet here tomorrow uh, when you go to meet that person you don't think that uh, the person who committed that i will come uh, is different than the person who has actually come to meet you know that both are same uh, it is uh, therefore we all feel we all experience it is much more than feeling uh, something in us that does not change at all while it is yet not exactly same in all of us that is the i that is identified with body and mind uses uh, this body and mind calls it as i it is again uh, in the realm of uh, plurality that is where uh, it is uh, i here and i there they uh, we consider them to be different based on the identification the identification with a set of body and mind it is relatively unchanging uh, that is why uh, it is not absolutely unchanging uh, absolute unchanging reality cannot be measured in terms of time and space or behavior at all uh, it is therefore one and same Uh, it is uh, uh, by default it is one there is no numbering and uh, n- numbering possible there so uh, th- about that there is no question of conscience but this conscience based on our uh, physical upbringing and so forth uh, that and uh, the other conscience which is based on the intrinsic uh let us say feel or experience of truth and falsity Tr- true and untrue uh, this uh, makes us this uh, inner or intrinsic uh, sense of conscience make us understand others although they are not exactly like me i can see their view point it is here that we can adopt to different circumstances uh, understanding yes uh, that person uh, uh, is not exactly like me uh, but uh, uh, well has uh, many good things that i can learn from him and is a good person uh, though uh i don't like that he smokes okay yeah but does does it mean that i should say that uh, that person is bad and so eliminated no it is uh, important to see on the basis of this uh being that is relatively unchanging uh you make the judgments uh so that uh, you transcend Uh, the changing body and mind uh, this is where we see that uh, many failures in this uh, 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 respect bring uh, many psychological disorders uh, it is quite well known that freud identified many types of uh, uh, the psychological problems that a person feels and those again get uh, <coughs> uh, further aggravated as psychosomatic disorders uh, they were rooted in this uh, feeling of guilt that uh, 
uh, I should have done this, I did not do this, or I shouldn't have done this, because, uh, uh, and yet I did it. My drags were pulling me uh, at uh, in some directions. Uh, I shouldn't have followed that drag, uh, because they, that is not right, that is not good. Uh, it is, I shouldn't have done that, but I did it. And then now you are in conflict and with your conscience and get the feeling of guilt, oh, I did wrong. <coughs> Many times uh, Freud uh, did that dream analysis uh, to find out uh, what might be uh, the suppressed, uh, this uh, uh, feelings or suppressed drags uh, because of this, uh, what he called superego, that that superego suppresses these things, and thus uh, uh, those go, things go deeper. They became various complexes in life. Your behavior gets, uh, uh, you see, a bit unnatural and complex, and uh, it is it develops into many disorders also. So, uh, this does happen, friends, that it is, uh, but what is the solution? Uh, do we mean to remove uh, this conscience and let people behave as they want and let them do whatever they like? And that is not a solution <laughs> either. So, uh, this conscience uh, needs to be you know, handled properly. Recently, today, I read uh, an article uh, in uh, on CNN uh, that uh, about uh, the religious uh, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, they have given two, uh, three examples uh, of uh, this, that one girl. Uh, she has it. Uh, uh, child uh, or in the early adolescent stage got into this uh, uh, idea that this is not right and continuously washing her hands, her body and still keeping the feeling this is I am not clean enough. Keep on washing, 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 washing. Mm, I have met such people. Uh, very difficult to see that uh, constantly washing. Uh, and yet the feeling of being dirty is there that uh, uh, because uh, who knows whether the water is clean or not so it is uh, with what are you <laughs> going to wash after all it is then other person of that about food what food am i eating uh, very difficult and uh, because of uh, the, the family and the uh, circumstances, the religious lessons that uh, they, they had learned, and uh, now uh, this thing had gone deep. And so, uh, uh, if I touch this, this is bad, and that's it. So, keep on washing the hands, and uh, since that it doesn't get properly washed, so it goes deeper as guilt that I have done so many bad things. Uh, the idea of sin sometimes becomes uh, so very uh, uh, difficult, uh, uh, such an impediment to human progress that I did this, I did wrong. I have to uh, therefore keep on uh, having this, uh, bearing this all the time with me. Uh, and even if you go to sleep, this continues. Uh, uh, they, there is a beautiful movie, uh, Dreams, uh, by Akira Kurosawa, a great Japanese director. In that, there is uh, an episode of Tunnel, uh, where you know that uh, a, a commander of a platoon. Uh, he knows that he gave a, a command because of which the platoon got all killed and then is feeling the pain of it. And the, nobody is blaming him. Uh, they, uh, he is seeing the, the uh, soldiers from that uh, platoon in the dream and he tells one of them, well, 
uh, you are dead uh, but that soldier says no i don't think i am dead all those ghosts of all these they are coming to his dreams and uh, there is a tunnel shown means he cannot get out of it as soon as he comes out of the tunnel uh, he again sees the, that platoon uh, walking towards him and then as they start going back a dog is shown that dog barks at him that dog is his conscience that oh you were responsible for that and now uh, this feeling of guilt remains with us and then does not allow us to go forward with our progress oh i did this wrong but the real use of this conscience will be to overcome that and learn like the example i gave that i fell the child thinks yes i fell doesn't mean now i have to sit there uh, and keep on crying no uh, get up and do things differently so that you will not fall uh, without committing mistakes nobody ever learns so uh, we need not keep on brooding about it the conscience is there uh, to show and to make us learn and it should be both these are very important uh, the relative social uh, personality related conscience as well as the conscience related to the inner sense of truth uh, and uh, th- that uh, what is right and what is not right uh, both are important why both are important uh, if we have just the sense uh, of uh, uh, what is truth and what is not truth uh, then uh, it won't get translated in our life in the social terms we live with other people and there we have to uh, act according to uh, what is conforming to the society there but without uh, giving up uh, this uh, sense of inner truth and then that will make us uh, adapt uh, to uh, whatever different people that we come in contact with that uh, yes this person is not exactly same but does it mean that it is bad many times here uh, uh, people get into problem uh, because uh, uh, one of their kins is uh, uh, getting married to somebody uh, who is not from their community uh, who is not from their country who is not exactly following their religion now the question comes that is it right uh the in the conscience pricks that oh that is wrong something but uh if you calmly see what is wrong in that remove those circumstances that you are caught in uh don't have to think only in terms of those circumstances uh you are in different circumstances in a new circumstances now bring up that conscience the conscience that is based not on changing circumstances but on this relatively unchanging let us call it individuality or let us call it soul uh, that uh, soul is the uh, reflection of the ultimate reality in us and that is why this conscience is the uh, real uh, Uh, let us say proof of god in us uh, what is the proof of god this is the proof of god i have this sense of conscience right and wrong it is the proof of god uh, existence of god because it has not been given by anybody uh, the sense of truth sense of right and wrong is intrinsic in that respect so that has to be held on to and it needs to be implemented or put into my social behavior 
it is not that so we should remove all the social norms of morality uh, that will be another disaster friends uh, social norms of uh, uh, morality they are good but we should remember that they are changing norms you move from one society to another society those norms would change and therefore what is considered ethical in certain uh, society at certain times is not considered ethical uh, in some other society at some other times the customs change they have to change but one important factor uh, remains constant and that is uh, given in mahabharata a, a great definition ultimately of what is moral uh, what is not moral and what uh, should actually determine the conscience and that is uh, whatever is done with the idea of uh, helping others is good and whatever is done with the idea of hurting is bad now this has to be put in practice in different circumstances uh, it is uh, uh, therefore wrong to uh, put very strict lines that it is this is good and this is not good i had told an incident of our uh, one ex president swami ji uh, he used to tell it with such uh, uh, that uh, humor associated with and and a great teaching i had told that incident here a few times but it doesn't lose anything in the repetition uh, he was uh, uh, the head of our center Uh, in northeast india where there are people living and then there are the surface coal mining also goes on there so uh, he was coming in a bus from uh, one place to another place and there were quite a few people uh, sitting in the bus and then uh, the bus stopped at one place and they uh driver told all of you get a get down now all of you get down now what was done afterwards lot of coal was piled uh in the bus and then everybody was told now okay you go and sit on the coal <laughs> now he came from a different said never had seen such a terrible thing in life all other went and sat on the coal but he started arguing with the driver conductor that what is this i mean this is uh, human beings we should not be told like that uh, we, uh, why are you carrying us like this and that man gave a beautiful answer uh, the, the he was asked, why are you telling us to sit on coal and then his uh, simple question to him was do you mean we should have poured coal on you <laughs> look at the situation uh, there are not too many vehicles mm, you have to you cannot think uh, of the uh, american uh, this thing there this this, this uh, uh, developed uh, society uh, where there are plenty of vehicles different laws and all that mm, it is limited vehicles limited other resources the coal has to be taken there uh, people also are to be taken there now what is to be done what best solution is available uh, the two options are there putting coal on human beings or putting human beings on coal <laughs> so what is the better option <laughs> the answer is obvious you see so it is that is done so now uh, if we have very strict uh, under this thing social moral ideas of right and not right uh, it will be considered as terrible terrible very bad very bad uh, but if you look at the uh, logic behind it 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 makes sense 
and thus we if our conscience is rooted in this unchanging core of our being then that conscience really helps us uh, to adjust to new situations to make us learn to develop ourselves to the ultimate goal to the ultimate goal where we will see who is this unchanging self in me and then you will see that it is really separate from body and mind and then where it is different from here and there and we will see that it is same everywhere everything is really pervaded by that one self everything is manifestation of that one self and thus there the conscience becomes now uh, really useless that word becomes meaningless there uh, it is uh, so automatic that it is uh, meaningless like taittiri upanishad says when a person realizes this truth now that person does not keep on thinking ki maham sadhuna karavam ki maham paapam karavam iti that uh, oh i why did i not behave in the right way why did i commit a mistake because that that is not there any more that person has reached the absolute goal of human life now there is no further uh, this right and wrong it has completely ceased there that is the goal and till then we need this conscience to take us there like you need a car to go to the destination uh, you get to the destination and now you don't just keep sitting in the car uh, you open the door get out of the car so conscience is like that car it has to be driven properly on the right track so that it takes us to the destination not on the wrong track uh, that uh, holding on to guilt and all those things that is driving that car in the wrong way uh, to drive it on the right way is to learn and move on change ourselves and then we get to that level to that stage where now uh we uh, do not need that anymore there is no such idea now uh, it is difficult to really uh, verbalize it because words cannot reach there our thoughts cannot reach there it is the one ultimate uh, goal of the whole existence so thank you friends